We've been talking uh, for the last several weeks, and we shall for the weeks to come, under the theme Jeopardy. You know how Jeopardy works. Our subjects are going to be in the form of a question. Some of the questions in the Bible, questions God asked us, and maybe a question or two we would ask Him. And we come today to a very important one, and it's found in James chapter 4. If you'll turn there, if you've got a Bible of your own, use that, or it's on your phone, it's going to also be on the screen. You did not ask to be born, I know that, and you're not going to be able to escape dying. The thing to be concerned with is what are you going to do with your one precious, incredible life? What is life? Chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes like the fog early mornings this week. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. God's word for God's people today. Russell Moore was at a dinner party and the host asked this question. If you could read anything, past, present, or future, what would you choose to read? If I'd been asked, I might have suggested uh, the next day's Wall Street Journal. I'd like to know what happened in the stock market a little bit ahead of time. But that's not what he said. He said, I would ask to read my obituary. You know, if you can read your obituary, you would know when you were dying, where you were, and, and what you died of. And so if you check your obituary and you see that you've got a date 20 years from now, well, that makes this week easier to take, doesn't it? Because you know it's not going to be so soon. But he says, I would look for something else. I would look for that paragraph that begins, he is survived by. And he would be looking for the name of his wife, his children, now grown, and uh, their spouses, and maybe the names of some grandchildren. And by reading the obituary the way it's written, he'd be able to tell if everybody was getting along by then. And if he would read closely, he would also see that his life mattered that he made a difference in this world. And I think that's what all of us want. What is your life? Well, at best, life is brief. We know that. In the light of eternity, it's not a long time. Psalm 90 verse 10 says, Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. They quickly pass and we fly away. 70 or 80 years. Now some live more and some live a shorter span. But any way you look at it, we're not here that long. And life is uncertain uncertain. And that's what James is getting at when he says, why do you say to, today and tomorrow we'll do this and that? I'll go to that city, I'll go to that city, I'll do my business and then come home. He says that's arrogant boasting. You don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. Proverbs 27 verse 1 says that. Do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring. How many of you had plans for this past spring, summer, or fall? That family cruise you were going to take, you'd save for and couldn't go. Or the big wedding, you had a long guest list and you either didn't get married at all or you pared it down to just family and closest of friends. Oh, well, we've got our plans, but we're not really in control. Somebody once said, if you want to make God laugh, Tell him your plans. We really don't control that much. What is your life? Let me suggest three things this morning about your life and mine. Number one, your life is 
a story. A story. It's the story of God at work in you. In the big things, yes, that's obvious. But also in the little things. The things that seem to be insignificant at the time. Inconsequential. But when you look back, you see they were of great importance. A door opens or shuts. Somebody says hello and your life is never the same again after that. You didn't, you didn't realize it at the time. It's now when you look back that you see that that is what indeed has happened. Your life is a story and it has a plot and God is working through it. We're on a sacred journey, every one of us. It's not just the big things, the Sunday things in church. It's every day we live, God is working out our story. Orson Welles, the film director, said, if, if you want a happy ending, that depends on where you end your story. Don't end it yet. God is still working. He has something else he wants to do. So your life is a story. Your life is also a song. And I like that music. That's making my point for me. Your life is a song. Words and music. Rhythm. Who could ask for anything more? A skip in your step. Is there a song in your heart today? When you come to First Baptist, you sing the rest of the week what you hear on Sunday. It stays in your heart. It stays in your soul. And it makes your life richer. The Himba tribe in uh, southern Africa have an unusual custom. They do not celebrate a birthday on the day the person is born or even the day the child was conceived. They celebrate the birthday from the moment the mother and dad decided to have a child. That's when they say life begins. And so the, the woman, the young woman, would go outside the village and she would find a tree and she would sit down under it and she would wait. She would wait for the song, the particular unique song of that child wanting to be born. And when she got it, she'd go back into the village and she'd tell her husband. She'd teach him the song. And then as they came together in love, they would sing that song and the baby is conceived. Then they teach the song to the midwife in the village. So when the day of the arrival came, they would all sing over the birth of the child. The whole village would learn the song. And so when a child was to be commended for something, they'd sing his song. When the child needed to be disciplined, they would sing her song. And when they came, when the child grew up and came to the very end of life, the whole village would gather around. And they would sing that song one more time. Now that's not our custom. But I kind of like the idea of there being a song in our hearts. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 says, He, God, will take great delight in you. He will rejoice over you with singing. You realize that God sings. And he sings over you and over me. Maybe our song. Ephesians 5 verse 15. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk on wine. Which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your life is a story, God's story. He's writing it still. And your life is to be a song. A song of joy sung from the heart. But one more thing. Life is a series of choices. Choices. Forks in the road we come to. Crossroads. We get there and we have to make a decision. We can't go in every direction. We choose the direction. Kierkegaard, the philosopher, said life can only be understood backwards. 
but we must live it forwards. Yeah, everything makes sense when you look back, but we don't have that luxury. We make our choices not knowing exactly the future, but trusting in God. Camus said, life is the sum total of all your choices. How you spend your days is, of course, how you spend your life. And so every day you're making choices. Yeses and nos. If you say yes to this, you're saying no to that. And you put it all together and that's the life you have made. The most important decision, the most important yes you ever speak is when you say yes to Jesus. When you open up your heart, he's knocking at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. You say yes to that. And you give him your heart and your life. And then everything else he ever says to you, anything else he ever asks of you, again, the answer is always yes. Whatever, Lord, you have for me, I will do. We make choices. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So you say yes to Christ. You say no to the world. You say no to worldly passions. You say yes to godliness, faithfulness, and service. Today, I want you to wonder, question yourself, about exactly what your life is. I'm saying it's a story, so what's the plot? What's the plot of yours? Can you connect the dots? Can you see God has been working all of your life? Before you were a Christian, before you came into this church, He was working and directing. And is there a song to your soul? Then sing it, sing it with joy, and say yes to Jesus Every time you're asked, don't put off living. So many people are. Well, I'll wait until the children are grown. Or I'll wait till I paid off my college loan. Or the house is finally fixed up. Then I'll have people over. We're always putting it off. Remember, life is brief and so uncertain. Don't put off really living. Start today to live that one incredible precious life God has given you would you bow with me please everyone we've had several people come forward this morning professing their faith in Jesus and maybe that's you maybe you're ready to do that you've said yes but you haven't made it a public commitment we invite you to come I'm going to be at the front of the room the center aisle and if God has spoken to you in recent days or even this day we invite you to come. If you want to join our church as a believer, this would be the time to do that. You step out and come. Father, I thank you for your call upon our lives. You have so much you want to accomplish in and through us. We make ourselves available to you now. Speak, Lord, and we will do what you're calling us to do. Through Christ we pray. Amen.